the channel. So David Dobrik, right? You know, he's been in a bit of controversy. I'm sorry, that's a bit of an understatement. He's been in a shit ton of controversy. So I'm sure you guys have already heard a lot about this. It really all started with one of his former uh, content creator friends who goes by the name of Dom got exposed for doing some questionable things with women. Following those allegations, there were actually more allegations placed on the vlog squad with one of the members whose name is Seth claiming that he had actually been in one of Dobrik's vlogs. This was in a video that he named, he thought he was kissing her, super cringy, in quotes. Where in this video, he was tricked into kissing a guy because he thought he was kissing a girl, and it, it just turned out that he was a guy. And at first glance, you just think it's a funny prank video and that no harm was done, right? But I mean, as I think more and more about the situation, it's just kind of like, oh, I wouldn't really want to kiss a guy either, so... I think that's where the sexual assault part comes in, just because he's, uh, you know, not really consenting to kissing a guy. And I wouldn't really be okay with that either, so I really see where the concern comes in for Seth. Even more so, after all that, David was exposed again for mocking one of his friends who's actually blind in their left eye. And the victim, Nick Quasani, dealt with this on a on a day-to-day -day basis. It wasn't a one-time thing that he was being mocked. It was a target in most of Dobrik's videos. He mentioned how he was often treated like a punching bag, and uh, just in Dobrik's perspective, that's just a very screwed up thing to do. I mean, I just feel terrible for this guy because his sole purpose in Vlog Squad was to literally get mocked by Dobrik. But yeah, basically all of this circulated over the past few weeks, and Dobrik has just been in a really tough spot lately. And in my opinion, he uh, absolutely deserves it because, dude, those are a lot of very screwed up things to do to your friends. And also, it's just very screwed up for you to be okay with somebody somebody. But yeah, I just thought I'd briefly go over that if you guys have not already heard about the situation. I didn't really want to completely re-explain the topic because I'm sure you guys have already heard about it as it is completely exploded on the internet. But there's actually been some more information that has came out about David Dobrik that really just puts him in a very tough area. And this involves most of his sponsors just completely giving up on him, dropping him, you know, throwing him in the freaking garbage disposal. But yeah, let's just go ahead and take a look at this. After the Insider piece published, several brands cut ties with Dobrik, DoorDash, Dollar Shave Club, and EA Sports among them, according to the Times. A HelloFresh spokesperson told the Washington Post, we are no longer working with David Dobrik or any member of the vlog squad and do not have any plans to work with them again in the future. SeatGeek also came out and said that it is not currently working with David Dobrik or the vlog squad and they don't have any future planned campaigns. And Dobrik is also stepping down from an app that he co-founded known as Dispo, with Spark Capital also announcing that they will be cutting ties with that company. But yeah, this just kind of throws David Dobrik in a very tough area because he's not making any money from sponsorships. And I mean, as a content creator, sponsorships are a very big source of income for content creators. So to be making little to no money from sponsorships is just a huge blow to his life entirely. But yeah, man, David is in a bit of a pickle right now, if I do say so myself. It seems like everybody is turning his back on him. And, uh, you know, it seems like cancel culture has actually succeeded. Traditionally, when somebody is quote unquote canceled, something will come out about them. Like when bad boy Halo said the R word and then and everybody will go back to normal about a week later. Well, here we are almost around a month later and people still just hate David Dobrik's guts. But I mean, let's keep it a buck 50. What do you expect for people to think when David uploads a video named Let's Talk and then he disables the comments on the video? That sounds a lot like hear me ramble on for two and a half minutes about how I'm so sorry when I really am not. I don't know, man. I think Mr. Dobrik should have thought that one through just a little bit more or maybe just put the slightest of thought or effort into that video. I don't know, man. Let's just go ahead and take a look at another source. A tweet made by Pop Crave said brands are cutting ties with David Dobrik following the misconduct allegations against him and his vlog squad. They then mention how HelloFresh, General Mills, EA Sports, DoorDash, Dollar Shave Club, and Audible have all dropped him. Very shortly after that, they also mention how Dobrik has stepped down from his camera app Dispo and how Honey has also confirmed that they aren't working with David Dobrik following the allegations. And then following that, there are many, many other tweets saying that Insert Company has dropped David Dobrik. And personally, I don't really think I need to talk about that because I think we get the idea that literally every single company known to man wants nothing to do with this guy. I say this guy, but I really mean Vlog Squad. I mean, every single company wants literally nothing to do with them anymore. And I don't really blame these companies. I mean, there's something called CYA. If you don't know what that means, it's called cover your ass, all right? I think the last thing a company wants to do is to, you know, be partnered with somebody who has all these allegations on them, especially in the state that society is in right now. I doubt anybody would want to associate with somebody who has that terrible of a reputation that sort of just came out of nowhere. So yeah, it really just seems as if vlog squad is over as we know it. I mean, there isn't really a way that they could come back from this. Everybody has their reasoning on why they hate vlog squad at the moment. So David Dobrik has actually came out with another apology. And uh, just before we actually jump into that, let me just get out of the way that hopefully, hopefully it's better than uh, a video named Let's Talk with the comments disabled. <laughs> I'm freaking sorry, guys. I just can't get over that, bro. But yeah, all I'm saying, let's just go into this with an open mind and uh, hopefully he can redeem himself. Hi, guys. It's um, 145 in the morning and I'm finally by myself <laughs> which 
I know it doesn't sound that crazy to be by yourself at 1.45 in the morning, but um, this week's been pretty hectic. You don't say, man. I mean, I, I suppose it's been quite a hectic week for you. I put myself in a lot of situations where I've needed to apologize for my past actions, and I've never done this correctly, and I've never done this respectfully, and my last video is a testament to that. I, I, I don't want to defend that video. I don't want to delete that video. I just want to be clear. And honestly, I can respect him for that. I mean, let's keep it a buck fifty. I mean, he's coming out and owning up to how shitty his last apology was. So yeah, I mean, in the end, that's really all you can do in this kind of situation. Boy, what I understand now and I didn't understand before is that she sent that text because she felt like she had to. I mean, what do you expect somebody to do whenever a multi-million subscriber channel comes to them and asks them if they could upload that video? I mean, what else do you expect them to say because they're obviously not gonna say no. You have way more social popularity and social power than them. How could you possibly expect them to say no after they have the fear of what could happen if this news got out? If they were the reason that their fans didn't get a video that day? I was completely disconnected from the fact that when people were invited to film videos with us, especially videos that relied on shock for views or whatever it was, that I was creating an unfair power dynamic. I did not know this before. I mean, big props for uh, David coming out and apologizing, right? You know, redoing this apology and making it an actual good one. This is actually a not half bad apology, but I just have to throw out there, how hard is it to expect that uh, you would have more power than this person and that they would be compelled in order to do everything that you would say? I mean, it's just not rocket science. Like, it's not a very hard concept to comprehend. I didn't know what was going on in that room. And I should have been. I should have been there and I should have been making sure that everybody involved was was taken care of and wasn't uncomfortable. Uh, hey man, uh, it's kind of funny that you mentioned that because you actually did know what was going on in that room. You guys are the only ones for me. I don't talk to any other girl. <laughs> After a couple minutes of talking, it was clear there was no five some happening tonight. I called it. Yeah. Oh well. You guys want to watch me and Trisha have sex? <laughs> I'm down. But by some stroke of luck and master negotiating, Dom made progress. Okay. All right. We got we got three in there. Jordan's gonna peek in so he can describe it to me. A bunch. Well, everybody's oh looking God, in. I mean. <laughs> I'm gonna have to leave the apartment. I was murdered in here. Dom, hey, what's up, dude? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, man, it's, it turns out that you actually did know what was going on in that room. And, of course, I hate to take that away from such a good apology. I mean, it was going amazing so far. Like, it was actually pretty solid. But just the fact that you failed to mention that you did know what was going on in that room and that you had to lie about it in order to cover your ass. If it were me, I would have just mentioned that I knew what was going on in that room and uh, apologized for not doing anything about it because, let's be honest, that's what you could have said. In a situation like this, owning up to your mistakes is really the best thing you could do and I don't really understand why he can't do that for this specific situation but of course he's able to for every other uh, situation that he mentions and it just kind of confuses me on why he left this one out and I think with this situation there's a lot I can look at and there's a lot I can learn from but there's a lot of mistakes that I made and I'm sorry for that I'm sorry for everybody I've let down I'm sorry to my family and I'm sorry to my friends that I've embarrassed and that this won't happen again. And in this situation, that's really all you can do is just own up to your mistakes and just say that you are sorry. And that's really where I respect him in this uh, apology because he just owned up to his mistakes. He didn't try and find a way around besides the point that I mentioned earlier, but he really just came out and was super real about the entire situation and how he was sorry. And I heavily, heavily respect him for that. I'm gonna take a short break from all the social media stuff because I realize there's a serious lack of infrastructure when I make any kind of content and I want to be able to have a place of checks and balances. I, I really truly hope that someone can take something away from this experience that another creator can can take away from this and I know it's it feels because I, I know how crazy it felt to me that there was some sort of toxicity or some sort of power dynamic in my friend group but really just take the moment especially when creating content that you're trying to get viewership out of or you're trying to get laughs out of like really take a moment and and look at where the jokes end and where the feelings begin. So yeah, man, I think that uh, apology was actually pretty solid and I'm sorry that I couldn't include the entire apology and I really just included parts that I really had something to say about. But I really recommend that you go click the link in the description and watch the entire apology just because I really only covered the parts that I found hypocritical or dumb in the apology because I'm definitely not trying to come off as saying that this apology is shitty because let's be honest, it was pretty solid. One of the most solid apologies I've seen come from a YouTuber in recent times. But yeah, honestly, this apology
apology is way more solid than the last one that we got because he talks about way more things that honestly are way more important to the situation and he owns up to his actions which is really the only thing you could do in this situation so just heavy props to him for that but yeah this is where i'm gonna go ahead and end out the video so if you did enjoy this video and you made it to this part of the video then please be sure to leave a like and subscribe with post notifications on but yeah i also have a discord server that i recently revamped so if you want to go join that and join the community uh there will be a link in the description and also i have a twitter so please be sure to go follow that but yeah thank you all for watching today i'll catch you all later peace Thank you.